And then when the Prophet ﷺ passed away, the narrations mention the Prophet ﷺ body was still not buried. And Bilal gave the adhan. And when he reached Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and he looked and there was no messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the narration mentioned that Bilal began to choke. And he began to cry and all those around him began to cry. And for the next three days, Bilal radiallahu anhu tried to give the adhan. Every time he would reach Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, he would begin to choke. And then he went to Abu Bakr and he said, Abu Bakr, allow me to leave. And Abu Bakr said, No, Bilal, you stay with me. I need you. Bilal radiallahu anhu said, Abu Bakr, if you freed me for yourself, then keep me. But if you freed me for the sake of Allah, then let me go. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu allowed him to go. And then one night, Bilal radiallahu anhu was sleeping. And he saw a dream. And in the dream, he saw the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Bilal, what is it that you never come to visit us? And he woke up and he traveled towards Medina at a hurried pace. And then he went to the grave of the Prophet wasallam, and he looked at the house of Aisha and he cried. And Hassan and Hussein, they came and he started crying more because Rasulullah loved them. And then they said, Ya Bilal, one Last adhan for you to remind us of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi Just one last adhan. And then one of the people said, they are the grandchildren of Rasulullah. Call the adhan for their sake. And he went to call the adhan. ويصعد على المكان الذي يقف كان عليه أيام رسول الله يؤذن ويؤذن لما قال الله أكبر الله أكبر ضجة المدينة. الله أكبر الله أكبر صاح الناس في البيوت أبو عيسى رسول الله تذكر الصوت الذي كان يؤذن في أيامه صلى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله خرج الرجال من, من بيوتهم وخرجوا من أسواقهم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أبو عيسى رسول الله أبو عيسى رسول الله فلما وصل بلال إلى قوله أشهد أن محمد مدى رسول الله خنقته العبرة وما استطاع أن يكمل أذانه ونزل من على المكان الذي كان يؤذن منه قال الراوي فما عرفت المدينة يوما أشد بكاء وعويلا بعد يوم وفاته كيوم قال فيه بلال أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أمان that the society caged him to live as a slave to serve as a slave, to die as a slave, and to be remembered as a slave. And this is Bilal bin Rabah, Abdun Habashi. Bilal bin Rabah was the lowest of the lowest of the slaves. Yet he had no family. He had no lineage. He had no wealth. He had no supporters. But he heard about the messenger's message, sallallahu alayhi wa And he went and he sat by the Prophet sallallahu He wanted to hear about this message. And it was a revolutionizing message. It was a message that even gave a slave hope. And Bilal radiallahu anhu, he embraced Islam because this Islam gave him hope. Bilal radiallahu anhu belonged to the tribe of Bani Jahab. His mother was taken as a slave and he was sold to a man called Umayyah bin Khawf. And Bilal radiallahu anhu would often see how Umayyah, when he would hear the name of the Prophet sallallahu he would froth from the mouth. But Bilal radiallahu anhu also noticed that they never had anything evil to say about the Prophet sallallahu and after a little while, Umayyah bin Khalf found out about the Islam of Bilal. And the narrations mentioned that he tormented him. And then they would say, Oh Bilal, 
denounce your religion. And he would say, Ahad, Ahad. They would say, Bilal, believe in Lat and Uzza. And he would say, Ahad, Ahad. The only man that they couldn't break was Bilal. Because Bilal broke them. And the Prophet ﷺ would see this persecution. And one day he went and he said to the Sahaba he said, he said, isn't there anybody out there who can buy Bilal and free him? And Abu Bakr anhu was Abu Bakr. And he went to Umayyah bin Khalf. And he said to Umayyah bin Khalf, he said, send me Bilal. And Umayyah bin Khalf said, yeah, I'll sell him to you because you're the one who corrupted him in the first place. So Abu Bakr said, how much are you going to sell him for? And he said, I'll sell him for 10 gold coins. And Abu Bakr went home and he bought back 10 gold coins and he gave them to Umayyah. And Umayyah began to laugh. And Abu Bakr said, Oh Umayyah, what are you laughing for? And Umayyah said, Abu Bakr, I swear by Allah, if you had haggled with me and you had offered me one gold coin for Bilal, I would have sold him for one gold coin. And Abu Bakr turned to Umayyah and he said, Oh Umayyah, I swear by Allah, if you had haggled with me and you had asked me for a hundred gold coins for Bilal, I would have given you a hundred gold coins. Abu Bakr bought him and he freed him. And then what would Abu Bakr say about Bilal? He would say, Bilal is my master. Umar ibn Khattab would say, Abu Bakr is our master and he freed our master. Abu Bakr takes him to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Bilal is in a lot of pain. But he, when he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the agony and pain went away. And he smiled and the tears rolled from his eyes. And Rasulullah smiled. He hugged him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Bilal was the most pleased and happiest man at that time. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there to welcome him. Bilal bin Rabah made hijrah with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the city of Medina. He dedicated his life to serve Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until Abdullah ibn Zayd, he had a dream about Adhan. And he rushed to the messenger of Allah. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I saw this dream. An angel came to me and taught me these words. Messenger of Allah did not say, Yes, you're Arab. You should call the Adhan. Yes, you're the one who saw that dream. You should call the Adhan. He said, Where is Bilal? And he called Bilal. Teach him the Adhan. And he taught him the Adhan. And for the first time in the history of Islam, went to the top of the Masjid al Nabi and with his beautiful, ringing, beautiful, beautiful voice, for the first time he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And the people of Medina, when they heard the call, those who was working, they stopped their work. Those mothers who were cooking and taking care of their children, they paused everything. The business people who were doing business transactions, they dropped the deals. And all of them, they marched to the Masjid and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they saw this man, Bilal bin Rabah, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala falah, calling the adhan. From that day on, Bilal radiyallahu anhu was known as the Mu'addin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the time moved. And the day of Mufatih Makkah came. And what a day. Messenger of Allah left the city of Makkah hiding. But now, on his mount with 10,000 mujahid looking down out of humility and respect 
Messenger of Allah walks into the Haram and the Quraysh, they walk away, they move that side. And the Messenger of Allah, he stood at the gates of the Haram, at the doors of the Haram. And he said to them, what do you think I would do to you? And they would say, you are such a generous brother, the son of a generous brother. He said, all of you go. I forgive you for what you've done to me and to my companions. Messenger of Allah says, Aina Bilal, where's Bilal? And Bilal comes. Listen to this. Quraysh are looking. Climb up the mountain of the Kaaba, Ya Bilal. And Bilal, he looks, he goes up the Kaaba. And he pauses for a second, subhanallah. And the Sahaba will remember that they remember the day they were not allowed to pray in public. And Bilal on the Kaaba, he calls the Adan and he says, Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah, a slave from Abyssinia is on the top of the Kaaba. That is what I call Izzat al Islam. And there was three mushrikeen. Uttar bin Usaid, Harith bin Hisham, and Abu Sufyan. Uttar said, I'm glad my dad passed away before seeing this day. A black man ascending the Kaaba and giving the Adhan. And Harith said, if I knew that Muhammad was on the truth, I would have followed him. Abu Sufyan said, I am not going to say anything because you know this pebble here, that pebble will inform Muhammad of what I said. After Bilal had given the Adhan, the Prophet ﷺ came to do three and he told them exactly their discussion. And they said there was nobody else here to listen to our discussion. And Uttab and Harith embraced Islam there and then. But what was the Prophet ﷺ doing with Bilal? Think about it. He was showing a token of the society that he had come to create. That Bilal had left the servitude of man and reached the servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how Allah elevated his status. Because the Prophet sallallahu dealt with these issues of racism 1400 years ago. And then came the occasion of the conquest of Masjid al-Aqsa. And the patriarch said that I will only give the key to Umar ibn al-Khattab. And Umar radiallahu anhu traveled from Medina to Masjid al-Aqsa. And all the Sahaba were there. Abu Baydat ibn al-Jarrah, Sharhbil ibn Hasana, Khalid ibn Walid, Muadh ibn Jabal. And they went up to Umar and they said, oh, Umar request Bilal to give the Adhan. And Umar asked Bilal to give the Adhan. And the narration mentioned that when Bilal reached Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Those beards of the Sahaba when they embraced Islam, which were black and now had become gray, they became drenched with tears. They had to console Umar ibn al Khattab because it reminded them of being in the company of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was amazing virtue for Bilal, for he gave a dhar in the Haram in Mecca. In the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu And also in masjid al-Aqsa. And then when Bilal radiallahu anhu and the 20th year he passed away. And the narration mentioned in Damascus he was passing away. And his wife said, she said, what grief, what sadness. And Bilal said, la. He said, say, wa farha. He said, what happiness. He said, tomorrow I will meet the Prophet wasallam and the companions. And Bilal radiallahu anhu passed away in the 20th year of Hijrah. He's buried in Damascus, in Maqbara Bab al -Sagheer. But this was a man that he may be buried here, but by Allah he's destined for Jannah. The narration mentioned that Bilal radiallahu anhu, he didn't leave any children behind him. Actually, he left no wealth behind him. He died in relative poverty. But you know what the inheritance of Bilal was? It was the Adhan. From generation to generation, 
the Muslims have adopted the Allah from Australia to Canada, from China to Argentina, from Mauritius to Iceland, a million times a day the Adhan is given. The Sunnah of Bilal is provided.